The word of the day today is sweeping. Every time I say the word sweeping, a janitor gets his flowers. This Lincoln Park situation has gone completely off the rails and Chester Bennington's son, Jamie, has come out to disavow everything that Lincoln Park is doing. We're gonna be diving butt cheeks first back into this drama, but before we do, welcome. My name is Dan Frampton and I like to make traditional, home-style, old-fashioned YouTube videos. Cooking up spicy bangers is literally all I do and I like to reply to every comment left on every Every upload within the first three hours of it hitting the internet. If I don't reply, you win and you can call me a flake until the end of time. So what says you that we jump back into this drama? I have to give you a little bit of a speed run on this drama, but if you want full context and full details, I've made two videos on this topic already. So we're talking about world famous rock and roll band Linkin Park. They disbanded in 2017 because they lost their lead singer Chester Bennington. A couple weeks ago there was a whole bunch of hype for their new album, new singer, new record, new tour, new everything. All of that rolled out really successfully at first. They unveiled their new singer to be Emily Armstrong. 24 hours after Emily was unveiled as the new singer, Cedric Bickler Zavala of the band At The Drive-In and Mars Volta came forward with his stories with his wife regarding Emily's involvement with Danny Masterson and the Church of Scientology. Emily came out and addressed it in her stories with a notes app kind of apology without an apology. Actually didn't even say the word sorry to be honest and only briefly mentioned the Danny Masterson thing and completely ignored the Scientology element of it all. Her response really didn't satiate the criticisms, kind of served to only fan the flame and now, as of a couple days ago, Chester Bennington's son, Jamie, has come out in opposition to all these out-of-touch decisions that Linkin Park seem to be making right now. And we're not going to be getting into everything Jamie is saying, because now he's kind of on a bit of a tirade, but that's a story for another time. And for context, all of this stuff goes down on the Instagram stories. So if you want to go keep up with all of that, this is Chester Bennington's son, Jamie's account over here the picture pieces archive and he posted this just to add a little bit of context Mike Shinoda of the band Lincoln Park says many people will take time to wrap their heads around us with her if people are respectfully not there yet I'm totally fine with that but disrespect me and you lose my respect in return oh it's gonna take people a while to wrap their heads around this is it Mike well that kind of set Jamie Bennington off onto a little bit of a tirade of his own he starts by saying hey Mike people aren't having a difficult time wrapping their heads around Around the prospect of Lincoln Park reinventing itself, they are having a hard time wrapping their head around how you, one, hired your friend of many years, Emily Armstrong, to replace Chester knowing Emily's history in the church and her history as an ally to Danny Masterson is what it is. Two, quietly erased my father's life and legacy in real time, not only during a band interview meant to clear the air about certain aspects of Lincoln Park's history and future, but during international prevention month. I'd mention you, but you restricted my interactions with you because you don't like what I have to say. So this will have to do. Mike would later go on to block Jamie, but we'll get there in a little bit. Three, have refused to acknowledge the impact of hiring someone like Emily without so much as a clarification statement on the variety of victims that make up your core fan base. No acknowledgement of the way you groom your fan base, Chester's kids or family, my falling out with your wife, Dan Danny Masterson's victims or even Emily's intimidation of those victims and the list goes on and on and on okay jumping back out now yeah Emily's involvement in the church is one thing but Emily is also being accused of intimidating these victims and a lot of people happen to be sweeping that under the rug they're okay to ignore that allegation completely and now that this story is starting to pick up I'd really like to hear a response from the band a little bit but I really don't think we're gonna be getting there. Let's move on to the next thing that Jamie had to say. What you've done is not something for people to acclimate to. It's not a shock that people are just going to have to take time to process and understand. You have betrayed the trust loaned to you by decades of fans and supporting human beings, including myself. We trusted you to be the bigger person, to be the change, because you promised us that was your intention. Now you're just senile, tone deaf, insane. At this point, I would wager that all you LP guys know is disrespect. You didn't trick me. I heard you slip at the end of one of your interviews that this album has been in the works since 
2019, possibly 2017. I know your pattern, I saw what you did. Now we'll be getting into a little bit of this because in an interview, Mike claims, oh, we didn't know that Linkin Park was just gonna happen. We were just doing sessions and da 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 da. And then there was a tweet that was uncovered from Mike saying that he had every intention of bringing Linkin Park back, dating all the way back to 2018. It says, I have every intention on continuing with Linkin Park. The guys feel the same. We have a lot of rebuilding to do and questions to answer, so it'll take time. And this seems to be a sticking point for Jamie right now, because this is a big hypocrisy, because Mike is also saying, no, we didn't want to do it, it's just happening so organically. His next story, disrespect us, go ahead, disrespect me. That is my opinion. I do not appreciate this comment made by Mike about disrespect, and I'm gonna say as much. My perspective on the matter is that, I've never seen the band allow for respectful resistance. I've never seen the band allow third party perspectives in the conversation. The pattern says that historically, people who express alternative views to the mainstream narrative are marginalized and shut down. I can attest to that, yeah. I have like seven years worth of content that kind of backs that statement up for sure. And then the last slide here says, I do not support. I think that makes his message pretty clear right there. And through all these posts that Jamie is putting up, I think it's important to note that he is still grieving. I know it's been seven years, but the guy lost his father, and I think he has every single right to speak up about the decisions that Linkin Park is making. It might be an alternative viewpoint to what Linkin Park have, but it's not dangerous. The guy just wants some closure, and I don't think he's gonna be getting it in this way. And when I say that Jamie went on a bit of a story spree yesterday, this is what I mean. He was non-stop. So I'm not gonna go into everything that he put into his story. I do think it's worth going through it yourself though if you wanna do that. But one big piece of this story comes from these stories and that he's going to be going to a Linkin Park show. And it's Chester's kid. Even though he has an opposing viewpoint, you think that they'd give him a ticket. Yeah, come on in, watch the show, whatever. How much harm could it be? So he goes on a bit of a quest to get tickets to a show. Someone ends up buying him tickets to a show. So now Chester's son gets to go to a Linkin Park show. But before a fan bought him a ticket, he respectfully messaged all the band's management and all the band's members and was like, hi, this is Jamie. I'm reaching out to you very respectfully. Da, 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 da. You can pause this and read it if you want. But he basically sent this very kind, respectful message to many people in Camp Linkin Park. All of which ignored Chester's son. This guy is clearly grieving. This guy is clearly still in pain. And you guys are just like, nah, I don't think so. You're saying some stuff that we don't really agree with. So we don't want you to come to any of our shows, not at all. And yo, like it just, it just keeps on going. And this is the Lincoln Park manager reaching out to Jamie. But as soon as Jamie starts talking about stuff, completely ghosted. Hi Rob, just checking in. And then, hi Rob, just checking in again. I asked about the show, da da da, no, nope, no show, okay, got it. Yeah, he's getting left on red, the band members do not care about him, just because he disagrees with the Emily thing. Oh, his story got picked up by Variety and Rolling Stone, that's kinda cool to see. Here it is, oh look, I got my tickets, I'm going to go to the show. And now, he has to deal with people like this. I pray you end up like your father, you disgusting little bastard. Did your dad also have accusations on him for a kid? Put the drugs down and pull your head out of your ass. Why are people thinking that this is okay to say to somebody? This dude lost his dad and is just expressing his opinion about his dad's former band. I don't think he deserves this kind of stuff being sent to him. And that's not it, because now it's public that he's going to the show, right? People are going to be saying some pretty crazy stuff, like this dude over here. I'm gonna find you at the concert <laughs> with love, Mike Devilface. Oh, are you, pal? This, don't find anybody. See you soon, big boy. No, you won't. A guy like this is all talk, okay? I see this kind of stuff on the internet all the time. This is the kind of person that sends messages to people, much like myself, that goes, come outside, I'm outside right now. It's like, no you're not, pal. It's clear you're not outside. And today, Jamie is continuing with it. He goes on to say, repeatedly, one, I have asked Linkin Park band members, affiliated SM accounts, and band management to step in and correct the behavior of their more aggressive, radicalized fans. 
some of which call themselves soldiers. Two, I have alerted the band and management that I intend on attending the concert and asked to receive formal acknowledgement if they don't want me at the show. Three, I have claimed that I am attending the concert for closure as well as to observe. I come in peace. I have been ignored. And then he goes on to kind of put it on Lincoln Park, end of story. If anything happens to me or my partner while attending the concert, it's on Lincoln Park. Don't necessarily agree with that. Gonna have to disavow that kind of statement. It will be on the person that does the attacking, okay? Everybody is responsible for their own behavior. But I do think Lincoln Park should come out and be like, hey, stop being so aggressive, you crazy idiots. But I don't know if that will do anything either. That might just like rile them up even more. But now my little channel isn't the only one talking about this kind of stuff. We have Fantano out here finally addressing it. He's not sweeping anymore. Thank God Fantano's not sweeping. He seems to have kind of the right take on this thing. Nick Nocturnal came out with his video and he's still kind of sweeping. He's like, I want to enjoy this, but I can't enjoy this because people keep telling me about evil things, tee hee. Well, sorry, Nick Nocturnal. You shouldn't have come on with your tinfoil hat right off the gate. So now I got to give you my take and my opinion on this Jamie situation. Just to put myself in his shoes for a little bit, I can only imagine how painful it is to be going through all of this. Your dad's former band, all the emotions for the crew, the band members, the fans, and everything would pale in comparison to the feelings that Jamie Bennington is going through right now. Coupled with the fact that he's being ignored by everybody in Lincoln Park, actively blocked and silenced by the band as well. All the while, they're in the shadows, still not addressing the Danny Masterson thing, the Scientology thing, and now they have to answer for this Jamie Bennington thing as well. It just keeps piling up and the more stuff that gets lobbed on, the worse it looks for Linkin Park, the worse it looks for Mike. And they're coming out to do a nostalgia tour first. They're not playing the new record for their first world tour. This is gonna be a pulling Chester's corpse out of the ground kind of thing. And I can understand why people feel that that's a little bit disrespectful. And then for Mike to turn around and have this take about disrespect is kind of wild. And then after they make all of those millions of dollars off the nostalgia stuff, then they drop the record, now they can tour the record, and they're just making major bank. They are absolutely capitalizing off of Linkin Park, and they have every right to be doing that. I'm not criticizing their comeback in any way. I'm just criticizing the kind of way that they're going about their comeback. Because if everything was as hot as the first day, that rollout was insane. And if it wasn't coupled with all of this controversy, my God, Linkin Park could be the most popular musical act going right now. But as an internet user, as somebody that's just following this story, now I need to hear a response from Linkin Park. I need to hear a response from Emily. Because the more voices that we hear, the more it validates this side of the argument. And I really need to hear the other side of the argument. That would be Excellent. So I'm not totally satisfied. Lincoln Park, you gotta stop sweeping. But I can tell this story isn't quite done yet. There will be further updates, I'm sure. But for right now, I'm done with this video. If you want more content, I have a video game channel, a slop channel, and this channel. So, watch more content. Okay, bye for now.